Intelligent, gorgeous, vivacious, and bedecked with both jewels and men, Paulette Goddard led one of the most fascinating lives during Hollywood's golden age and emerged as one of the amazing range of charismatic men and women Hollywood found to play in its films during the great golden years that stretched from its earliest hand-cranked times to the mid-1940s when television changed everything. But beyond the screen life are downtime moments that humanize this icon of yesterday. And in this video, we will be bringing to light a few interesting little-known facts about the comely Hollywood star. So make sure you watch this video to the end, hit the subscribe button for 7 years of good luck, and leave a comment I subscribed in the section below, and we'll try as much as we can to reply to you personally. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Number 10. She started as a child model. Born Marion Levy on June 3, 1910, in Whitestone Landings, Queens, New York, as the only child to Jewish cigar manufacturer Joseph Russell Levy and English Episcopalian Adam May Levy. Though she grew up to become an American actress, she didn't begin that way. She started as a child fashion model at age 10 with Saks Fifth Avenue and a performer in several Broadway productions as a Ziegfeld girl. Eventually, she became a major star of Paramount Pictures in the 1940s. Number 9. I Love My Mommy While it's every child's joy to grow up with parents, Paulette's case was different. In 1926, her parents separated and later divorced, after which she was brought up by her mother, with whom she moved from New York to Canada to Kansas to escape her father's custody. She quit studies at an early age to support her mother, briefly attending Mount St. Dominic Academy at Caldwell, New Jersey. According to Goddard, her father left them, but according to J.R. Levy, Alta absconded with the child. Goddard grew up with her mother and did not meet her father again until the late 1930s after she had become famous. Number 8. You Are Not My Father In a 1938 interview published in Collier's, Goddard claimed Levy was not her biological father. In response, Levy filed a suit against his daughter, claiming that the interview had ruined his reputation and cost him his job, and demanded financial support from her. In a December 17, 1945 article written by Oliver Jensen in Life, Goddard admitted to having lost the case and being forced to pay her father $35 a week. To avoid a custody battle, she and her mother moved often during her childhood, even relocating to Canada at one point. Number 7. I Am Paulette Goddard in 1926, she made her stage debut as a dancer in Ziegfeld's Summer Revue, No Foolin', which was also the first time that she used the stage name Paulette Goddard. Ziegfeld hired her for another musical, Rio Rita, which opened in February 1927, but she left the show after only three weeks to appear in the play The Unconquerable Male, produced by Archie Selwyn. It was, however, a flop and closed after only three days, following its premiere in Atlantic City. Number 6. Be My Girl In 1930, Goddard signed her first film contract with the producer, Samuel Goldwyn, to appear as a Goldwyn girl in Whoopi. However, Goldwyn and Goddard did not get along, and she began working for Hall Roach Studios, appearing in a string of uncredited supporting roles for the next four years, including Show Business, Young Ironsides, and Pack Up Your Troubles with Laurel and Hardy. Following the success of Modern Times, Chaplin planned other projects with Goddard in mind as a co-star, but he worked slowly, and Goddard worried that the public might forget about her if she did not continue to make regular film appearances. She signed a contract with David O. Selznick and appeared with Janet Gaynor in the comedy The Young and Heart, before Selznick lent her to MGM to appear in two films. Selznick was pleased with Goddard's performances, particularly her work in The Young and Heart, and considered her for the role of Scarlett O'Hara, but not without a screen test. The year she signed with Goldwyn, Goddard began dating Charlie Chaplin, a relationship that received substantial attention from the press. It marked a turning point in Goddard's career when Chaplin cast her as his leading lady in his next box office hit, Modern Times, in 1936. Number 5. She was the first actress given a Technicolor screen test In the race to play Scarlett O'Hara in the 1939 Gone with the Wind, Paulette was the leading contender even before Vivian Lee was signed. Other top candidates who were given consideration were Joan Bennett and Jean Arthur. 
But Paulette was at the top of the heap. Her inability to produce a marriage certificate proving her domestic status with then-husband Charlie Chaplin, along with the entrance of Miss Lee into the Scarlet Pool, was enough to dismiss any hopes of securing the big role. The strength of her screen test, along with all the publicity the part generated for her, did however help her snag a long-term contract with Paramount Pictures. Number 4. I Need a Man When it was time to settle in marriage, Goddard was introduced to millionaire playboy Edgar William James, president of the Southern Lumber Company, by her uncle Charles Goddard, whom she married in June 1927 and settled in Asheville, North Carolina. The marriage didn't last long and ended with a divorce in 1929 with Goddard receiving an alimony settlement amounting to $375,000. She met Charlie Chaplin in 1932, the year she signed with Goldwyn, and the two hit off instantly. Their relationship became a hot topic for the media and Hollywood gossip columns. The couple left for a five-month cruise to Asia, along with Goddard's mother in 1936, during which they married secretly in China. She, therefore, became Chaplin's third wife and stepmother to Charlie Chaplin Jr. and Sidney Chaplin. The marriage failed due to Chaplin's busy work schedules. The two separated in 1942, with Goddard obtaining a Mexican divorce and a $1 million settlement. Again, she met Burgess Meredith while working on Second Chorus, whom she married in 1944. The same year, she had a miscarriage due to an atopic pregnancy. The couple divorced in 1949. And finally, in 1958, she married German novelist Eric Maria Remarque, famous for authoring All Quiet on the Western Front, and settled in Ronco Sopra Ascana, Switzerland. The marriage lasted until Remarque died in 1970. Following Remarque's death, she inherited his wealth and property in Europe, including a large contemporary art hoard, and resided in her luxurious Switzerland home for the remaining part of her life. Number 3. No Child to Call Me Mama If you ask me, one of the greatest pain of Paulette Goddard will be not having children of her own. Although she miscarried in the mid-40s while married to actor Burgess Meredith, upon her death in Ronco, Switzerland, where she had retired, she left $20 million to New York University. As a result, Goddard Hall, a freshman residence dorm located on Washington Square, is named in her honor. Number 2. Final Exit In the mid-1970s, Goddard was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent successful treatment through invasive surgery. On April 23, 1990, she died of emphysema at her home in Switzerland from heart failure at the age of 79 due to excessive smoking. She was laid to rest in Ronco Village Cemetery next to her husband Remarque and her mother. Number 1. Arguably, Goddard's foremost legacies remain her two feature films with Charles Chaplin, Modern Times, and The Great Dictator, and a large donation to a prominent American educational institution. Goddard, whose own formal education did not go beyond high school, bequeathed $20 million to New York University, NYU in New York City and an NYU freshman residence hall, situated in New York City's Washington Square, is named Goddard Hall in her honor. Long after her death, Goddard continued to excite the imagination and command the interest of millions of us who had seen her on the large screen, as she attests to the immortality that the motion pictures grant to those who have been seen in them. Did we miss any Paulette Goddard facts in this video? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button share with your friends, and subscribe for more of our interesting celebrity videos.